Let's take a look at a very simple two-period consumption model. We're looking at consumption today and consumption tomorrow. Now more specifically, we've got $10 and we're going to spend it on soup and the price of soup today is a dollar and the price of soup tomorrow is $1.25. So the first thing we want to do is create our budget line. So if we're looking at cans of soup tomorrow on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis we've got cans of soup today, we can now plot our budget line. Let's look at tomorrow. So we've got our $10 of income. Price of, of soup tomorrow is $1.25 a can, therefore we can buy eight cans. And today, if we spend our $10, soup is a dollar, so we can buy 10. And we join the two, and this represents our budget line. Along this line are all the possible combinations of cans of soup we can have today and tomorrow. Let's take a closer look at the slope. So the slope we know first off is going to be negative. And we can find it by dividing the price of a can of soup today by the price of a can of soup tomorrow. So if we substitute in our dollar for a price today and a dollar twenty-five for a price tomorrow, we find that the slope is negative 0.8. Now this number is very important. Right? What it's doing is it actually tells us the opportunity cost of soup today. In other words, for every can of soup we purchase today, we are giving up 0.8 cans of soup in the future. Now this is the basis of the two period consumption model. Now what we need to do next is to consider, let's say it's not today and tomorrow, it's this year and next year. So if that's the case, how would we have to change your model? Well, here's a hint. Any money we save this year, it will earn interest as we put it into a savings account, and so that will give us more money in the future. However, we just saw from this example is that prices go up in the future, so we're going to buy fewer cans. So we need to combine the change in prices as well as the interest earned on savings.